Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to talk about the aircraft mounted selfie stick for an Insta360 camera. So, some disclaimers that I wanna discuss um, because I think it's important. I have an experimental aircraft. I can modify, mount stuff, do what I want. There's broad rules for experimental aircraft of me being able to modify the aircraft. If you have a certified aircraft, you need to, you need to follow up with whether you can do anything like this. Um, if you have a Cessna 172, you can't modify the wing like this um, without going through some steps to have sign-offs and A and P approval and some other things. So I'm just discussing this for my plane, an experimental aircraft. So that's, that's number one. The second thing is anytime you mount something on your aircraft, there is inherent risk involved. Of course, flying has risks, but it's all about mitigating risk, lowering your risk. Um, so obviously you're watching this video, you know I'm a YouTuber. Um, I wanna get video for my personal use and then also for the channel to share. I enjoy it. Um, so I decided I wanted to mount an Insta360 camera on my plane. And I wanted to do it before I get it painted so that you know everything can be painted to match and I'm not modifying my plane post paint. So I went ahead and got this. This is the Insta360 X5. It just came out this month or in the last month. Um, I'm brand new to Insta360. I did film my last video with this camera um, just to sort of get to learn how to use it. And the idea is that it takes a full 360 view of wherever you are. So when you're flying your aircraft, you can pan over and look at the cockpit, you can look at the ground, you can look ahead of you, you can see other planes in formation or around you if you're at a busy airport with some um, parallel runway action. Uh, it just, I've seen online, it does some neat, neat camera angles that I thought would be fun to share with everyone. Uh, one of the things I used to do when I lived in Florida is just fly in the coastline. And uh, we used to get some beautiful just shots with my phone camera or my, my you know, camera out the wing uh, or just out the window. And I thought, you know, doing the same thing with this would just be really pretty. So I mounted this. Now, what this involves, so this is the camera here. It's not very big. And it mounts on a, uh, a one quarter 20 post. Uh, so it screws in. And then this selfie stick is mounted up underneath my plane. Now I'm gonna break off and show some pictures that I've taken um, of, of how this looks under the plane. And then I'm gonna stop the camera and I'll, I'll get under here and show you how it's mounted right now um, as it's configured. But this selfie stick disappears during editing. So you won't see the stick, but you can wrap around and get views any way you want. So that's the whole idea of it being on a stick like this. But then also you can look back, you can see the cockpit, you can see here. If you just had an action camera mounted on the wingtip, you're only gonna be just looking in one direction the whole flight. So this just gives you a lot of options in editing uh, to do your videos. Now, because it's an Insta360, the way it films, you have to add a step to your video editing where you have to uh, edit it through the Insta360 app. I think there's some other options, but that's the one I'm using for now. Uh, to get your, your placement of where you wanna be looking at, then you output it into, uh, I'm using Final Cut Pro for my editing right now. And then, and then you do your, your build your video. So it's an extra step, but it's not a very difficult step. The Insta360 app, I sort of figured it out in one night. So it's not that big of a deal. So that's the camera. Um, I filmed one thing with it. I have not filmed anything in my plane with it because my plane is not yet flying. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this stick is from a company called 6-7 Designs and they sell lots of mounts 
mounts for cars, mounts for motorcycles, mounts for aircraft, all sorts of stuff. And this one is specifically designed for aircraft. Um, that does not mean that it's approved by any manufacturers or anything. You're on the hook for anything that happens. And obviously if this thing breaks off, there's some important stuff back here, you know, like your ailerons <laughs> that you don't want to get hit with a piece of flying plastic. So be forewarned, you, you need to make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing and that you're being safe. So this actually is a nine foot selfie stick. So this um, actually will extend out really far. I'm not even sure that's in the frame, but, or you can, uh, there we go. You can shorten it up. And then in my mount, this is as short as it'll get. Um, I think there must be some locks in there. I've got to, I haven't even read the instructions yet for uh, how to work the locking collars. There's some anti, they don't want it to spin in flight, so it sort of locks in. So um, that was my issue, I think, with folding this up. But this would be the shortest. And as you can see, I'd still have a good view of the front part of the plane, and then of course anything around, but I wouldn't be able to get like my face in the cockpit or anything behind because the wing would instruct it, obstruct it. But when you pull it out, if you can even see this, um, you get a lot more bounce in this pole. Um, now the camera itself has some image stabilization built into it, but I kind of think this is probably as far as I would ever go because it's going to allow me to wrap around and get a pretty good view of the plane, wrap around, see the tip, and then of course all everything in front of me. If I was back here, I think you lose some views. Now the pro to this is it's way firmer. You're going to get a lot less bounciness. So if all you're worried about is filming out here, you could, you could push this back and you'd probably have a much more stable uh, camera platform. So that gives me some options. And that option is actually part of the reason I chose this one over some of the other ones because some of the other mounts are not nearly as long and I was afraid this is all I'd ever get. And I kind of thought being out here somewhere would be a better view and that'll just be trial and error once I get flying. So, um, this, like I said, this is from a, a company called 6-7 Designs. Um, I don't know anything about them. Um, I've, I've seen them on some flying videos. Trent Palmer mentioned them in a video that he was using some mounts from them. I'm not sure if he's using this pole, but um, that's how I went to their website to see uh, what they offered. Uh, there's several companies that sell um, sell mounts and, and these selfie stick poles for aircraft mounting, but not a lot. There's two or three. So this one is made out of carbon fiber. The quality seems really good. Um, these are aluminum and they're, once you tighten them down, it's tight. Um, everything is very smooth. It feels very robust. Now in a second, I'll get the camera and I'm going to get up underneath here and I'll show you the finished mount of how it looks underneath the plane. But, so my mount, um, and I'll, I'll throw an image up, but it's a triangle shape with a mount that a ball goes into, and I'll show you that as well, um, so that I can unscrew the whole apparatus and take it off the plane in, in probably 20 seconds. But then if I wanna take the mounts off that are up underneath here, it's, it's four screws on each mount. There's two mounts. There's one here and one here. And I can take the whole mounts. And then the only thing you'll see under the plane are riv nuts. Um, I originally was going to use M5 riv nuts. Um, 
and I actually drilled, this is a, a doubler plate that I made, um, but I, I didn't have exactly the right drill bit for, uh, for M5 riv nuts. And the riv nuts were a little loose in here and I decided I didn't want that. So what I did was I downsized to M4 riv nuts. Um, I pulled out the load capacity and I think I'm way, way over the top for what I need for this. Um, because each mount has four M4 riv nuts and, uh, and then I have a doubler plate and I think we're, we're way over for the force that would be on this mount, um, which I think would be pretty minimal uh, compared to what sort of load capacity I would have for eight M4 screws. So anyway, this is um, 16th of aluminum that I got on Amazon. Um, I got two sheets like this for, I think it was $10 delivered. Um, so I think 16th is like 0.06, um, but you might want to look that up. This is actually pretty stout. Uh, as you can see, you can't, you can't bend it by hand easily. Um, the, uh, you could probably go a little skinnier, but this is what I found online. And, uh, it was within the, uh, the grip range of the M4 riv nut. So I went with this. So, I didn't like the holes, so I remade this. I just cut out a new one, got it fitted, and then I, I added the riv nuts. And of course, as every riv nut I've done on my plane, I used uh, um, high grade epoxy adhesive to um, help additionally lock them into place. And uh, I think the installation's very clean. When the mounts are removed, I think I have a picture of that. Um, all you see is four riv nuts. And, uh, so after the the plane is painted, if I have the whole mount removed, you'll never see it. It's it's up underneath the wing. But because I have a mount here and a mount back here, I have some stability um, where it's not going to want to twist. Um, and I, I think we're gonna be pretty stable. I've seen some of these in flight where people have filmed and the mount is vibrating the whole time, but then the, the software in the camera, the Insta360, gets rid of that bounce because you're out, you know, you're going 140 knots. <laughs> you're you're going to get some vibration in anything like this. If you had an action camera on the tip, same thing. You're going to have some vibration. The wings are going to be moving. Um, you've got to filter that out with some software. Uh, so anyway, this is, this is the setup. I'm going to pause. I'm going to get the camera up underneath here and we'll see how it looks. Okay, here's, I'm underneath the left wing of my plane. You can see this is the inspection hatch. And I wanted it to be close to the inspection hatch so that I could get in here to help figure out where the doubler plates needed to go. And then I wanted to make sure that the doubler plates were, uh, the, the rib nuts went through the doubler plate and everything. So the doubler plates are riveted into place. Uh, so I have four rivets holding the doubler plate. And then I have four riv nuts that go through the aircraft skin and then through the doubler plate. So I'll show some pictures of that uh, so you can see it. Um, and of course, I'll back up. So there's two mounts. So the reason I picked this mount was just because I felt like it was going to spread the load out. Um, you probably can't tell. This is maybe five inches and then it's about two and a half wide, I think. But they sell single post mounts, but I just didn't feel like that made me comfortable. I was just afraid that it might flex the skin too much, and I thought this would distribute the load better. So personal decision here, um, I am not an engineer. Um, do your own calculations and make your own decisions on that. So this is how it, this is how it looks. Um, I think it's I think it's very stable. I don't think I'll ever encounter any damage to my wing and it's gonna hold it in place really well. The one thing after I installed it that I'm a little worried about and I'm going to fix is that if you can see this is the aileron. So if this slipped and it's very tight, there's two screws in each one of these that clamp it down. Um, so this is very, very tight. 
But what I worried about is if it somehow loosened up, this could slide back and give you limited um, travel of your aileron, which would be bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put, a, I'm gonna drill with my drill press to be very accurate. I'm gonna drill a hole through here and I'm gonna put a bolt so that no matter what, if these get loose, this pole cannot slide back. Um, it's just to give me a little extra comfort and uh, it'll make me feel better that I'm absolutely, this is never gonna slide back and impact my aileron because that would be really, really a, a bad problem. So uh, again, that's, that's probably uh, one downside of the way this, this thing is mounted. So, but I'm very happy with the quality. It looks really nice and uh, I'll be doing many videos in the future and I'll be able to comment on how good this works in uh, actual function. So one more thing I wanted to mention here at the end of this video is uh, we had some pretty sad family news. Um, my 10-year-old uh, Great Pyrenees Penelope passed away this week. Um, she was very special to my wife and I, and uh, she spent, I don't even know, countless hours out here uh, as I've been working on this plane in multiple different locations, keeping me company. She was a great companion. Um, but uh, we lost her to a neurological condition. Um, those big, great big giant breed dogs um, don't live as long as you'd want them to. And they're very special friends and great members of your family. Um, so I know uh, I've showed uh, Penelope in many of my videos over the last three years of me filming. Um, I'll throw a few pictures of her up here. Um, but anyway, very sad news. And I just wanted to share that. Um, so, uh, Little shout out there to Penelope, a great, great friend. Um, so that's it for this week. I'm gonna do another video about the, the issue, the charging issue with my plane. Uh, I'll know more tomorrow, I think. Um, I've got some testing that we're figured out um, that Lockwood Aviation is helping me with and uh, to help me further isolate my problem. But uh, that's it for now. Um, uh, we'll see how this goes in some future videos when I'm up in the air and filming, and uh, we'll see if this was worth the, uh, the effort. Uh, for now, thanks, and have a good night.